Hello, my name is Andres Guerra and I work in the Catholic University in Peru. Today, I will be presenting our results concerning the band gap engineering of amorphous hydrogenated silicon carbide thin films for photoelectrochemical water splitting applications. I'd like to start this presentation by highlighting that hydrogen field production, as well as the research on photoelectrochemical devices, has gained increased attention in the past decades. Additionally, fuel cells have already achieved efficiencies around 75% and they are already available commercially. Wheels photoelectrochemical devices have achieved different technologies of photoelectrochemical devices have already achieved efficiencies around 16%, making them attractive for commercial applications. So in the case of um, the materials used in semiconductor-based photoelectrochemical devices, they should fulfill certain requirements like a high chemical stability, low over, over potentials, a nice band edge position to drive the reactions, as well as the material should be abundant and cost effective. Also, the band gap of the material should be high enough in order to be able to uh, dr drive the reaction, as well as low enough to have a sufficiently high uh, photocurrent in the case of using sunlight. Among these materials, silicon carbide has been used already as photocathode in photoelectrochemical devices. In particular, one can change the optical band gap of this material by changing the stoichiometry of the material. However, by changing the stoichiometry, one can hinder its chemical stability and also the band edge position alignment. Therefore, what we will aim in this work is to tailor the optical properties and the optical bank of, of this material by changing the hydrogen content, as well as by uh, performing post-deposition thermal treatments. Now, the question arises on how do we determine the optical bank gap of an amorphous material? Here I'm plotting the tau plot or the absorption coefficient in the tau scale, that is the square root of the absorption coefficient multiplied by the a photon energy versus the photon energy. And by using the TAUG model, one can determine easily the optical band gap. However, in amorphous materials, this determination can be biased by the presence of large Urbach tails. These Urbach tails can be modeled by the so-called so Urbach rule. We have developed a model based on band fluctuations, which can actually model the whole fundamental absorption, that is the TAUG region as well as the Urbach region in a single equation. Although the question looks a bit alien, we can find certain node parameters like the Urbach energy as well as the, as the optical band gap. Also, this, this function call, is called polylogarithmic function of order two and is nothing more than a representation of a Fermi integral. If you are interested in knowing more about this model, please visit the, a paper we published a couple of years ago. We have grown samples with four different hydrogen dilution conditions during the deposition process. One without hydrogen and three with increasing hydrogen contents. From optical transmittance measurements, we have determined the uh, thickness, refractive index, and absorption coefficient by a method developed also uh, in our group. In a way that we uh, do not use a dispersion relation to model the absorption coefficient. Here on the right, I'm showing you the absorption coefficient of these samples in this grown state uh, in the talc scale. Red lines correspond to fits performed using the band fluctuations model, whilst the black dotted lines correspond to fits using the traditional talc model. Remember that this model, the talc model, does not take into account the presence of Urbach tails. Now here I'm showing you the tau gap versus the annealing temperature for these four different samples as well as, for comparison purposes, the E04 absorption band gap. And on the right, I'm presenting you the optical band gap determined with the band fluctuations model. We see several features, but first, it seems that depending on the model we use, we might have a material with a band gap inside or not the uh, sweet region for a photoelectrochemical device. In particular, the variation of the optical band gap with the annealing treatment in the case of hydrogen and silicon carbide has been attributed to the out diffusion of hydrogen. However, we see the same behavior that is an increase and a decrease uh, of the band gap in the case of a sample 
grown without any hydrogen dilution. We believe that this variation is actually related to change in the structure. And for this, we have also performed FDR analysis on these samples. We focus on the sample grown with, with three SCCM uh, flow of hydrogen because it's the one that has the closest band gap to the region, the suitable region for the photoelectrochemical application. And also, it has hydrogen, which in, improves heat electrical properties. From the absorption coefficient in the infrared uh, region, we determine the bond density, and we see how, in fact, the carbon hydrogen and silicon hydrogen bonds are quenched with annealing treatments, as, as expected. Also, from the silicon hydrogen bond frequency, we are able to note that there is a change in the environment of the silicon hydrogen bonds related to the increase of the silicon carbon or the creation of new silicon carbon bonds. Here I'm showing you the measure of the full width half maximum of silicon carbon bonds from FTR measurements for the four samples versus the annealing temperature, as well as the urbac energy determined with the band fluctuations model. We see a similar trend, a similar behavior in both cases. The urbac energy, as well as the full width half maximum, is related to change in the structure of the material. This sample uh, experiences a thermal induced densification. We can see this directly with uh, SEM measurements, as well as by measurements performed with optical transmittance. We see how the thickness or the relative thickness is decreasing with increasing and lean temperature. We also see that when if we plot the optical band gap versus the mass density, we see that the band gap increases with the mass density as expected. So, and to be sure, we also perform in a different group of samples grown in a similar fashion, uh, X-ray reflectometry measurements um, of these samples after different annealing temperatures. And we see how the thickness is also decreasing as well as the uh, measured mass density is increasing. So we believe that the shift we observe in the optical band gap with the hydrogen uh, dilution is actually related to a densification of the material. When the hydrogen is introduced in the material during the deposition process, it passivates dangling bonds and reduces the volume these dangling bonds are occupying, thus reducing the mean um, lattice constant. Also, the shape these uh, curves have with the annealing temperature, in the case of the Tauk band gap and the E04 band gap, is actually linked to the Urbach energy. As we said at the beginning, the Urbach tails bias the determination of the optical band gap with these models. It is easily to show that if this is the Urbach rule, here written along with the Urbach focus, E0 and alpha 0, and the band gap falls within the range where the absorption coefficient can be modeled with the Urbach rule, you can write the optical band gap determined either with a Tauk uh, plot or the E04 uh, method in terms of the urbac energy. That is, when the urbac energy increases, it will show a decrease on the optical band gap. Additionally, we know that this variation is related to a change in, change in the structure. For this, we perform Raman measurements, and we see that the silicon, silicon bonds are quenched more rapidly than the carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds. Also, carbon-carbon bonds uh, are quenched and then increase again. Finally, we grow photocathodes with these silicon carbide layers grown under these hydrogen dilution conditions on top of P-type silicon substrates. Out of linear sweep voltometry, we, we were able to show that this, it is possible to drive the reaction, in particular for the sample anneal at 600 degrees Celsius. And we also perform a Motschotky analysis. From this much shot analysis, we are able to determine the, the flat band potential as well as the um, space charge region, ranging between 390 nanometers and 435 nanometers, which is around the thickness of the uh, silicon carbon layer. Therefore, establishing that there is uh, also absorption through the silicon substrate. The variation on the slope is actually related to the to variation of the, the electric constant with the frequency. We're still making 
uh, still studying this uh, system and trying to find a suitable equivalent circuit in order to perform a better analysis of the capacitance. So this will be all for me from my part. Thank you very much for your attentions. And this is, uh, these are the institutions that are supporting us. Thank you very much.